Hey folks, welcome back for another episode of Code Club. In the last two episodes, we have been talking about how to ship uh, data with our Philotyper package. The Philotyper R package is going to be a tool that you could use to classify 16S rRNA gene sequences against a reference. Now, if none of that makes sense to you or you, you're kind of confused about what all this means and it just seems like jargon, hold on, don't worry. The key point is that we're classifying something against a reference. And so that reference doesn't change from run to run. The input, the, the sequences you want to classify, that's going to change. And so I would like to make available the reference. Now, the reference might change because there's a variety of different references out there that one could use. And so part of this comes into my thinking about how I want to deal with making that data accessible. As we currently have uh, Philotyper written, I have one version of that database from the Ribosomal Database Project, Train Set 19, that was released, I believe, last year um, in my R package. Of course, there are other versions, uh, older versions of that reference that one might want to get a hold of. There might also be newer versions, and that's just from the Ribosomal Database Project. There's also a Green Genes reference with multiple versions and histories, and there's also a Silva reference. All of these files are accessible to anybody for free um, on their parent organization websites, as well as through the mother website that I maintain. The mother website format is a format that works with mother and will also work well with Philotyper. So I've been getting my train set data from the mother website. All right, so just again, step back. We potentially have many different versions of the reference that you could use, but again, once you generally pick the reference you want to use, uh, you'll then classify any number of sequences against that, and that's going to vary perhaps from project to project. And I need to make that reference readily accessible to people. Again, having these standard references makes it standard, right? And so when I say I classified against train set 19 from the RDP, people know what that means. And so what I think I want to do is go ahead and make separate packages for each version of these different references. I had an idea that maybe I could make a function to um, download or get accessible any version of those references, right? So say the, the RDP, the green genes, or the Silva, you could have say like a get RDP reference function within Philotyper. The problem with that, however, is I want this project, this package to live long after I have interest in this project. And um, you know, the, the website, might go down at some point. Um, and so having to kind of maintain my R package as well as maintaining the website um, makes things just harder, right? And so if the package itself contained the data, the package could always be accessible without worrying about whether the underlying data that goes into the package is accessible. Does that make sense? Um, also then other people could perhaps make their own uh, packages um, built around this idea of the database that they could then use to make it kind of interconnect, if you will, with Philotyper. Hopefully this makes sense. But again, this is my current thinking in how I want to uh, provide the reference data to my end users. So what that means is we are going to make a new package, a data package, and pull out the reference data from our current Philotyper package. So I'm here in our studio within my Philotyper project directory. If you wanna get Philotyper as it currently stands, as well as at the end of the episode, and I guess I'll also make my new package accessible at the end of the episode. Uh, look down below in the description, you will see links to GitHub for where you can get access to what the code looks like at the beginning and end of this episode. So we'll go ahead and start with create package, and I'm gonna go ahead and give that the path to where I wanna put the package as well as the name. And so I'll put it off my home directory and in the desktop, you'll see that Philotyper at least on my computer is on the desktop. It doesn't really matter where you put it as long as you're not putting the new package in another package and so that it's accessible to you and you remember where it is in the future. I'll then go ahead and call this train set 19. Uh, and I guess I need to wrap that whole path in quotes. All right, and then we'll go ahead and do that. So this went through a variety of steps and we now see that we are in our train set 19 desktop directory. And you'll also see that we have an RStudio project file here, as well as our R script directory, and that is empty. And then we have the namespace, the uh, description, an rbuildignore, and a .gitignore file. 
So here in my other RStudio window where I ran create package, you'll see the dialogue uh, of steps it ran through to create my new train set 19 package. And so of course it creates the directory. It then created the active project to that. It created my R directory, which we saw, and it started a description file. Um, and so here is a variety of the information that is in my description file, which I'll want to be sure to clean up. It also then created the, the namespace file we saw, as well as the rproj file, and then all sorts of things with rbuildignore, git ignore, right? Coming back over to my train set 19, maybe I'll get going with my description file. Again, it's gonna be called train set 19. And so what does the package do? I'll say provides the RDP train set 1916 SRNA uh, sequence reference. And so it needs to be in title case, which means that the first letter of the main words uh, should be capitalized. I'm gonna run the risk of leaving train set uh, to be lowercase because that's what it's supposed to be. Anyway, I'll then go ahead and put in my information. So I'll say Patrick uh, Schloss, and then I'll put in here uh, pschloss at umich.edu. I'm the author and the creator. Uh, my ORCID ID, I'm gonna come back to my other filotyper and go to the description um, and then grab that, because who remembers these things? Maybe I'll go ahead and think about what I wanna write here for the description and I'll come right back. All right, so I went ahead and wrote a description, a data package that provides the users of the filotyper package with the reference data needed to classify 16S RNA gene sequences using RDP's train set 19 taxonomy reference. The data were originally posted by the RDP and reformatted for use with mother. Both the RDP and PDS versions of the train set 19 reference data are available as train set 19 underscore RDP and train set 19 underscore PDS, I'll say respectively. All right. So let's go ahead and make sure that works by running document. Um, and of course that isn't working because DevTools is needed. Uh, so we'll do DevTools document. I'll also go ahead and build it to make sure everything works at this early stage. I'm sure I'll get some warning at some point here. All right, so it's giving me an error, checking the malformed authors at R field. And I see I've got extra double quotes here. Go ahead and save that. And again, it's good to document and check things frequently to make sure, make sure things work so you don't get too far out ahead of yourself before realizing that you have bigger problems. All right, so we've got a warning saying non-standard license specification. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the MIT license and solve that problem. So I'll go ahead and run that use MIT license. And again, this needs to be dev tools. Uh, for my other package, I put dev tools into a .r profile file. Maybe I'll go ahead and do that here in a minute. I think use MIT license might actually be part of use this, but this is kind of illustrating a problem that I'm having. So I think I'll instead go ahead and start with library dev tools. And I think that will make, yes, that'll make use this accessible as well. And so then I'll do use underscore dev tools. Um, and this will go ahead and make changes to my .r profile file and Let's see, this is opening up my .r profile file, and this is my one in my root directory, and um, it's telling me what to copy and paste up into here. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this uh, back up into here. So generally, you don't want to require or run library in your .r profile file. This is a file that is started or run whenever r is started. And so you generally don't wanna do that because it's not very portable. So if I were to then give you my code, um, expecting a certain package is accessible, say like Phylotyper, uh, but you don't have it installed, then you wouldn't know that it um, was getting loaded and installed, right? If, if you gave it to somebody else and that would cause problems for whoever's getting your file. However, DevTools is a workflow package. And so Jenny Bryan and Hadley Wickham in the R Packages book, they absolve us. <laughs> they say it's okay to use it like this because you're not gonna generally use DevTools as a dependency for other packages, right? It's, it's a tool to make it easier to create your packages. So I'll go ahead and save this. Um, and so the next time I restart R, um, these changes will take effect. Maybe I'll go ahead and do that here just real quick, okay? So now we can test it with our use MIT license. So the use MIT license, 
and that works just fine without an error, showing us that dev tools and use this are loaded, so I don't have to worry about running library whenever I start R, uh, R Studio to work with functions from those two packages. And so we'll see that it added MIT and file license to license um, and made some other changes. So let's go ahead and look at our description. Um, and so I think, yeah, this license field was what it modified down here, um, right? And then it created a license file and a license uh, markdown file, right? And that's all good. And I'll go ahead and close those out. I also want to set up using git, so I'll do use underscore git. So it again gives me a dialog. There's seven under uncommitted files. List those out. Is it okay to commit them? You'll notice that it gives you two no's and one yes to make sure you know what you're actually doing. And as we kind of go through these different options, you'll see that the order of the positive and negative responses varies to kind of keep you on your toes. So I'll go ahead and say two for sure. Um, this is required to activate the git pane. Restart now. Sure. And so now we see that the git pane is set up. Nothing has been changed. Um, if I were to go into tools, terminal, new terminal, um, and do git status, I now see that, yes, even my command line tool C, that I am using git, and that is all good. So I'll go ahead and close that and close that out. So now that we have git set up, I want to go ahead and set up GitHub. So we'll do use underscore GitHub. And here I want to give the organization. And so I'm actually going to put this into the mother organization uh, because these are files that work well with mother. And I suspect eventually Phylotyper will move from the Rifamonas organization to the mother organization. Great, so we see that it has made the connection to GitHub and made the GitHub repository. There's one uncommitted file in description. Is it okay to commit it? Um, and so let's see what's in description. And so we'll go ahead and click on that. And so what it's changed is again, the URL to GitHub as well as where to file issues. So I'll go ahead and say, is it okay to commit it? Yes. And so now we see that we are up there, right? So mother train set 19 is a package that is here on GitHub as part of the mother organization. Oops, <laughs> I see I don't have a readme file. So I think that's something that I will do next. And so we can then do use underscore readme um, RMD and that will create an R markdown version of the readme that we can then use tools to convert to the markdown version of the readme. So this opens my readme.rmd file. I'm gonna go ahead back to my description and grab uh, this description here and copy it into my R markdown file uh, and replace kind of this holder text it has in here. So we'll go ahead and uh, copy that there and kind of left justify everything. And yeah, this gives in information about installing. So then in the example, it has the library call to load train set 19. To then get the data, you could then do train set uh, 19. And that's all you need to do to see uh, what's, what's in the uh, packet, in the data set, right? And because this is going to be run as an R markdown file, it's probably going to spit out all of the information about train set 19. So maybe what I'll do here instead would be like head on train set 19. And so I don't need all this extra information in here. Um, and so it tells me you still need to render readme.rmd regularly to keep readme.md up to date. DevTools build, me, build readme is handy for doing that. Okay, so we'll go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and delete this information and save that. So in that text we deleted, we saw as part of DevTools, that there's a build uh, readme uh, function. We'll go ahead and run that. Ah, so this is failing uh, on the build readme because it cannot load train set 19 because we haven't told it what train set 19 is yet. And so again, this readme.rmd file is running all of the code that we describe here in this code block, right? But there isn't a train set 19 object in the package yet. So we need to create that. So what we'll start out with is use R and I'll say data. And so this will create a file data.r within my R directory. And so then here I'll do train set 19 and we'll go ahead and save that. And actually I've already created this before, right? And so what I will do is come back to my filer typer package and then in R I have data.r, right? 
So I'm going to go ahead and copy this, come back over to my project here, and paste that in. Um, and so you'll see a few things here uh, that we already had documentation, and um, we also have this database version, which is what we went through the whole rigmarole of deleting last time. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that from here. All right. And so I'm not going to worry about DF because I've also removed the DB. Uh, so I'll call this RDP, uh, which reminds me that over in my readme, I need to modify this train set 19 to be RDP. Um, I'll also do PDS. Okay. So save that. Come over here. And I'm thinking I, I could basically copy this whole thing, right, um, for the PDS version. But what we could do instead uh, would be to um, use a Roxygen tag, which is at RD name. And so this allows me to um, combine multiple blocks into a single document. And so what people use this for um, is to basically use the documentation for something else here, right? And so I'm going to go ahead and plop this in here. And hopefully that will allow me to use the same documentation for both data sets. We'll see how that goes. Um, and this will then will be PDS. Uh, go ahead and save that. And let me double check that that works document. All right. So it's still complaining that it's not an exported object yet. Uh, so I'll, I'll come back to this perhaps, but this is kind of giving me a sense of what I want to do. Um, and so we'll say the format is a data frame uh, with, uh, let's say three columns. And I'll plop that in there for now, just to keep it there. Uh, because the two versions are gonna have different numbers of sequences, right? So I'll say the RDP version contains the same sequences as provided by the official RDP version. The PDS version uh, contains extra eukaryotic sequences, including chloroplasts and mitochondria. And I'll say, see the mother reference file page in sources uh, for more information. Okay, and clean up my typos here. So that's good. And I'll say this, um, let's see, I'll go ahead and put in the number of sequences, okay? And get that. And of course, I can wrap the comments, rewrap the comments. I think it was Control Shift forward slash. Bingo, it did it. All right. And so now we can clean this up. Cool. So now we have our R file for generating both the RDP and PDS versions. Now, um, if you recall back at our Phylotyper page, uh, Back in the home directory, we had a data directory as well as a data raw directory. And so data raw um, has the train set 19.r script, which is information on how to build these different things. One thing that happened in the last episode, because I had to uh, screw with the history of my repository to delete that file and then get a fresh version of the repository, was that in my benchmarking directory, I lost my data. <laughs> and so We'll need to think about how to do this. But let's go ahead and come back uh, to our Transet19 uh, project. And so now what we could do would be to do use data underscore raw. And we'll then call it name equals uh, Transet. And then this will create a directory called data hyphen raw, which uh, is down here. And again, if I refresh this, it resorts everything. And so then in data raw, it's got this train set uh, dot r script right and so this is the code to prepare a train set data set that goes here okay and so i'm gonna again come back to my file typer package come into data raw to train set 19.r and i'm gonna go ahead and copy this and let's go ahead and uh, paste it into here and so now we've basically copied everything over from file typer into train set 19. I'm going to go ahead and modify this instead of train set 19. I'll do RDP uh, and uh, the PDS data sets go here. All right. And so again, we had these paths to FASTA and taxonomy, as well as then a way to generate the DF. And so this URL has the RDP. So this is the RDP version, of course. So I'll call this RDP. 
uh, and this RDP. And then let me see um, if I've got the underscore DF anywhere else. So that's the FASTA data frame. And then right here, uh, this should also be RDP. And then I'm not worried about the train set 19 DB. So I'll go ahead and delete that. And again, if I, if I bring it down um, to get the PDS version, that will have uh, basically the same thing, except it's PDS instead of RDP. And then down here where I have RDP, I need PDS. PDS, PDS. Uh, obviously duplication of code, all the code from lines three to 12 is duplicated in 16 to 25. I could make a function to do this, but it's only two things. So I'm not totally worried about it. The one thing that I will do is to, um, when I'm building the package, to download the data from the mother website, rather than having these raw files accessible here. And so to do that, we need to do some downloading of files within R, which is actually pretty cool and something we generally don't think about. So generally when you're reading a function, say like with read underscore TSV, you can actually give that a URL, uh, the website that points to a TSV up on the website and it'll read it directly from the internet. But these files come to us as a .gz or tar.gz file or .tgz file. So we'll need to download that, decompress it, and then get the files that we want. All right, so I'm gonna create a URL uh, as a string. So if I go to mother.org blog, uh, and then um, it's, I've already got it here because I've seen it before, the RDP uh, v19 reference files. This is the readme. And if you go to this link, mother compatible reference files, this will open up the page that's got version 19, and you'll see the RDP version and the PDS version. And so here, if I hover over this in the lower left corner of Chrome, you can see the URL. I'm gonna go ahead and copy the link address and paste that into here, right? And this then will become my URL. And um, I can then do download uh, file URL. And let's make sure I've got URL loaded. And then if I run download URL, um, argument dust file is missing, right? And so I could, I think, do dot period, and it's not happy about that. Naturally, it complains that I didn't give a location to download that file to, right? And so one thing that we could do would be like base name on URL, and this then gives me the base name, kind of the, the name uh, without all the rest of the path of the file. And so I can do download file URL, comma, um, and I'll then call this file name. Uh, I'll call this full file name. And then I'll pop full file name in here that we're gonna download this file that's at the URL to full file name. And so then if we um, look, uh, we see that the file has been downloaded to this directory, which is fine, um, but probably not exactly where I want to put it. I think I'd rather be able to put it into a temporary directory um, because as it currently is, um, it's showing up in my Git um, tab here, right? As wanting to go ahead and store this to my Git repository. I could add something to the .git ignore file to ignore that, but eh, that just seems a little inelegant. So I'm gonna create a tempter using the tempter uh, function. Uh, and so now if we look at temp uh, dir, we see this <laughs> random uh, temporary file. And again, the nice thing about tempter and these temporary files is that when R is relaunched, it basically will write over uh, and clean out uh, the temporary directory, okay? And so then I can go ahead and make full file name. Um, so that'll be the, the base name, right? And so I'll say temp file name, and I'll then do paste zero with temp dir, and then forward slash, and then full file name, right? And so oh, I've got to define all these things. And so now my oh, full file name needs an underscore there. And so now, of course, if I look at temp file name, I've got all that and it ends in that. Okay, so then we're gonna download the file to our temp file name. And if I do list.files on my temp dir, I now see, um, there's other stuff in there, but I see, of course, my train set 19 
rdp.tgz file is there. And I can go ahead and remove the version that was downloaded to my project directory. I'll go ahead and delete that, yes. And so now I am ready to decompress my temp file name. So I'll do untar, and I will then give it my temp file name, and I'm going to decompress it to my temp underscore dir directory. All right, so I'm getting an error, and it's saying basically the path to the directory is not found in the archive. And so I think what it's doing is that conventionally when you run tar from the command line, and you give it the, the tarball, uh, the tar archive, followed by uh, something else, tar is going to try to extract that something else <laughs> from that archive, which isn't what I want it to do. And so I think instead what I need here um, is x, uh, actually I don't know the argument, let me double check. So let's go ahead and do help on um, untar, and we see that the argument, so sure enough, the first argument is files, and then xdir is what we want. So we'll put xdir here on that. So let's go ahead and run this. That works, wonderful. And now if I do list files on my, um, let's do tempdir, then we see that we sure enough have our directory here. So that is good. And if we then look within that, we could do something like paste zero, like we've seen before, uh, uh, with quote, and then uh, transit 19, this thing. All right. And another close parentheses. And there I see my fast day file and my tax file, which was basically what we have here. So we want to get those files out of the directory and into R. And so we want to create basically that path. So um, I could go ahead and do that by basically taking this paste statement um, to make a path to the FASTA file as well as to the taxonomy file. So I think what I'll do is if I do list.files on that, we saw that, right? I could then say full.names equals true. And this gives me the full path to those files. And I could also do something like um, pattern equals dot fast day. And this then gives me the fast day file, right? Um, and I could do the same type of thing, uh, but with tax, right? And that gets me the taxonomy file. So cool. So this then could become fast day. And this could become taxonomy, right? And then I could comment those out, right? And that would be good. And let's go ahead and get this all let's get this to line up. So if I go ahead and load FASTA and taxonomy, FASTA DF, um, so I can't find read FASTA because I need to go ahead and load the package. Um, and so up here, what I could do would be like install underscore GitHub, and then I'll do rifamonas forward slash phylotyper. And then I'll do library phylotyper so that the functions from phylotyper are accessible, namely uh, the read FASTA and read taxonomy file. Um, and so it's asking me here, do I want to uh, update any of these? I'm gonna go ahead and skip on updating those. So that loaded. Um, and so now let's go ahead and do read FASTA. So I thought I did library phylotyper, but maybe not. Let's go ahead and try that again. That works. And then get the genera with read taxonomy, and then make sure these all work. So I've got train set 19 here. I think I want uh, train set 19 RDP. And then uh, this will then create the train set 19 RDP file into my data directory. Now what we can do is think about doing the same thing, but for the PDS version, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and delete this stuff out and then copy this down, um, but I don't need to redo the install GitHub. I'll go ahead um, and do this, and maybe here I'll just kind of simplify this. Code to prepare the PDS data set goes here, and then up here the code to generate the, the RDP data set uh, goes here. Okay, cool. And maybe I'll go ahead and pop this up here, good. And then, uh, again, down here for the PDS, um, I'm gonna change basically everywhere that I have RDP into um, PDS. So I'll do RDP, and then I'll do in that selection, I'm gonna replace that with PDS, 
replace all. Uh, but before I did that, I see that I do have in selection checked. So I'll go ahead and change that. 11 occurrences changed. And just double check. Yep, I still have RDP up for that first one. And so now this should work for PDS. So let's go ahead and run all these. So that went through swimmingly. I'll go ahead and save. And now the document should work. Try that, all right? So it says um, that it updated everything without an error. If I go ahead and do train set 19 RDP, I get this, right? And yep, we see our updates and that the two references are here, the RDP and the PDS. If I do the same thing, but for PDS, I get the same file. Um, if I do train set 19 underscore PDS, uh, I get a whole bunch of stuff thrown out to the screen. So it's good to see that worked. Um, but it, let me do dim on train set 19 on PDS. And so this has 24,662, or 62, not 42. So it's got 20 extra sequences, or I guess 120. So 24762 versus 24642. So I'm gonna go ahead and update that in my uh, documentation here, right? And let's see, update that. And then the PDS version, I'll say, so I'll say total sequences, put in a comma here and make it look pretty, um, put total in here, and then let's go ahead and reflow that comment with the shift control forward slash We'll then go ahead and redo document and great that gets updated we're in good shape now let's see if readme.rmd will build and so then we'll do build readme and that worked um, and so then if we look at the readme file that is new and that we see what um so that didn't quite work the way i thought it was going to work i wonder what trainset 19 rdp looks like for some reason, it is truncating the output to only show the ID column. So maybe in my RMD file, um, it, it doesn't like probably that the, the taxonomy and the sequence columns are so wide, right? So maybe what I'll do here instead is dim on both. Let's go ahead and save that. And then I'll redo the build readme. And now if I look at the readme file, I see Yep, I've got the output with the correct number of sequences and columns. So um, I'll say here is a profile of the train set 19 RDP and train set 19 PDS uh, reference data. Okay. And so that's all good. So, of course, because I modified that, I need to now rebuild, build readme. Ah. And so. <laughs> Wouldn't you know it, I edit it in the .md file rather than the .rmd file. I think I heard someone yell, Pat, 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 stop. <laughs> so let me see. If I undo, I can grab that sentence and I can then paste it over here into the .rmd file. And so I'll go ahead and close that .md file. And then we'll try this one more time and hopefully we'll be done with our readme file. All right, so now if I look at readme.md, I see the edited sentence. That's great. I'll go ahead and close that. Let's go ahead and run document one more time. Everything is updated. I'm gonna go ahead and try to build it. So let's go ahead and check it. All right, so I got a warning and a note. Uh, so it is too big, 11.7 uh, megabytes. Um, it's bigger than what CRAN wants to host, which is fine by me because I don't really plan on hosting this on CRAN. I think I'm gonna put this on GitHub, but um, I'm going to go ahead and set the lazy data compression in our description file. And so we talked about doing that before. And so here we had lazy data true, lazy data compression, I'll do XZ. So lazy data, what that means is that the data doesn't actually get loaded until you call on the variable, right? So I could do library train set 19 and the memory usage doesn't change. But when I then do say like PDS equals train set 19 PDS, then that data gets kind of pulled out and in, into memory. And so then the memory data, uh, memory situation changes. So um, go ahead and set that compression so that it's compressed. Let's go ahead and rerun the check. That ran through, no warnings, no notes, everything is good. Um, I'm then gonna come back to get, and I will go ahead and stage all of these changes. I'll do it here in GitHub. 
again, just kind of show people how to do it both in GitHub as well as the command line. I can then go ahead and commit th these pending changes to say transfer and update code for train set 19 data from Philotyper. I'll maybe put that in curly braces to make it clear that that's a package. Go ahead and commit that. Good. And then I'll go ahead and push that up to GitHub. Turning back to my GitHub page, refreshing. I now see all this good stuff in here. Um, and yeah, we're, we're in good shape. And I'm pretty happy with how things look. Uh, one thing we talked about in the last episode, of course, was the problem of pushing up files that are too big. Um, I should have checked this before doing that. But again, if I come back to my terminal and uh, look at the size of this, if I do ls lth on data, I see that these files are 1.6 and 1.5 megabytes. Not large in the least. I'm really not worried about that. And I think um, those would be in good for people to use. Um, if I were to change something about this repository, um, I will actually leave this to you all as homework to work on, um, is to basically go ahead and make this into a function, right? So the, the thing that is different between the top <laughs> and this bottom is whether PDS or RDP is used. The other thing that I could imagine this function doing is having the train set 19 uh, be a variable because I'm theoretically gonna make these types of uh, packages for other re uh, train set references. I will leave this to you as homework to go ahead and see if you can't convert this into a function that is then called twice. See if you can do that. Let me know what you turn up. If you're able to post something up onto GitHub, let me know, let me see it, I'll, I'll take a look. All right, and, and hey, if you have some pretty fancy skills with Git, I would love a pull request uh, from anybody that would wanna go ahead and modify this. Um, and I would gladly go through that process and perhaps highlight that here on the channel. Um, maybe I'll, if I don't get anything in the next few weeks, I'll go ahead and do it myself. One thing that I wanna emphasize though, is that if you're going to use this Trainset 19 uh, data package, to get access to it, all you have to do, all you have to do is install GitHub mother forward slash train set 19, and then you'll be good to go. I'm not gonna put it on CRAN because I think it's still too big to go up onto CRAN, and I don't wanna kind of litter CRAN with all these reference packages. Um, in the future, I'll probably be modifying uh, and creating other packages for these other references from the RDP, Green Jeans, as well as from Silva. That'll do it for today's episode. Hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if you have any questions down below in the comments. Again, try to work on that function for our uh, kind of making our code to generate the data dry. And we'll see you next time for another episode of Code Club.